Hey everyone, Zach here, and welcome to lesson 80 of this RTS tutorial series. In this video, we will clean up our AI a bit so that it will set destinations properly when our unit is fatigued or is hungry. The same task we'll create will be used in our unit trees when we create those, and we'll also set it up so that if we release a unit when it is afraid, from a building that is, it will run back into that building. And this will also give us a chance to check our aborts on our fear branch. All of that said, fire up your editor and let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to the editor. And in this video, we're gonna clean up two issues that we have. The first issue is that if a unit enters a building while afraid and we release the unit, it will not return to the building. The second issue we have is that if a unit is hungry or fatigued now, it will not go to the barracks because it will not have a destination set. We're going to take care of that second one first. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop open our behavior tree and in here, we're just going to move some things around just so we have a bit of room to play with. I did not mean to move all of that. There we go. And we're going to create a new task that will occur between the exit building and the move to residence. So that new task is going to be relatively simple. So let's just create a new task. It will be of our BTT task blueprint base. And let's pin that up there. Let's go back to our main window. And let's rename this task as BTT set destination. This is going to be a relatively simple task. So let's move it into our task folder. Let's go into here. And our set destination has two functions or two events we really care about. We're gonna do it all on the event receive execute. So receive execute AI. We don't need to do any casting in this one. What we do need to do, however, is we need to create a set value for our location type. So we're gonna create two variables to do that. We're gonna create one that will be location type. This will be our Blackboard key selector. And I'm gonna put it into a folder I'll call Blackboard key. And the second variable we need, by the way, we do need to make that exposed is a location type enum. And this will be our building names enum. All right, so grab your location type and we are just going to pull off of this and we are going to set blackboard value as enum. Grab both those nodes, collapse them, actually plug them first into that execute, then collapse them down to a function. This function will be set location type, line that up, and then pop into that new function. In here, all we're gonna do is we're gonna put a return node in, and we are going to take this value here, and we're gonna plug it into the set location type input pin. So we have one input that comes in. Go back to our event graph, we'll leave this at zero. Zero as our outside. It's the blank value in that enum that we're using. Now, we just are clearing this to make life a bit easier in case we send units around to different locations. We want it to be cleared just to be on the safe side. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna get our location and we are going to do a switch based on location. If the switch happens, and again, we need this exposed, we are going to change the building, the location type. So we're gonna set our location name, and then we are going to grab our set location type. Sorry, that was the wrong thing. We're gonna grab our set location type. We're gonna plug the execute into there, and the return value into value. So we're just gonna duplicate this for each of our possible locations. So we'll go from factory, and I'm gonna grab both of those and duplicate them. And that will be our training post. This will be our barracks. 
And finally, we just need one more. This will be our silo. All right, I'm gonna move them so their lines aren't as crossed. There we go. Now we need one more node for this to actually work. We need to tell the AI that it's successfully done this. So we're going to do a finish, execute, and we're gonna say this is successful. Now just plug everything into that finish, execute. Like I said, this is a relatively simple task. All right, now let's compile and save it. Let's go to our behavior tree and let's call that task up. So this is set destination. And we're just gonna rename this node as set to residence. Change location type from is busy to location type. And our location target will be our barracks. All right, we're gonna move this or duplicate this over on our get food sequence here. I'm just gonna move things along so it's a bit, again, neater. So we are gonna set residence again. This resolves the issue when our unit is hungry or fatigued about where does it need to go. Next, we're gonna open up our unit master. We're gonna leave this open for a few things. We need to run some tests. So we'll use a unit master for the test, but we also need to set up a new function. And we're gonna clear out everything we have here because we don't need to worry about it. And this function is gonna be called up in other locations. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create this new function. It will be our clear location type. And on here, we're gonna grab our reference to our AI controller. We are gonna get our blackboard. And we are going to set a value as an enum. So set value as enum. Again, we're gonna leave the value as zero because that represents blank or landscape. And our default location for our units will be outside. It shouldn't typically be in a building, especially in an RTS of this type. As for our key value, we're gonna cheat a tiny bit and make sure that the spelling is correct. We're gonna to go to our blackboard. We are gonna grab our location type and we're just gonna copy that name. Or if you trust yourself to type it in properly so it matches, go for it. We're gonna promote to variable. We'll name this variable, variable location type. We need to compile, so we get the default, and we need to set location type to location type as the default value. And I'm just gonna put these into our AI categories. Next, so this clearing just helps us when we move units out of a building, especially when the AI says, oh, this unit should already be in a building. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our building master. And let's pop open our building master. And I'm just gonna rearrange it so unit master is always the last thing here. That way when I run my tests, I can easily find it. Now in our building master, we need two different functions. We're not creating anything, we're adding to them. So in your unit master, find your release single unit and release all occupants. So release single unit, release all occupants. And let's start with the release single unit. So at this bit here, we have the set destination where we clear out our destination. We also need to do the same for our clear location type. So I'm gonna put a reroute into here. I'm gonna drag off of this and I'm going to do clear location type. Remember that's our unit we're pulling that reroute from. And I'm just gonna move that pin into there. So the execute goes from set destination to clear location type into our for each loop. I'm going to repeat this process for our release all units. And I'm just gonna move this reroute a bit closer if it'll let me, there we go. Plug that reroute in and we are going to clear location type again. And again, I'm gonna unpin that execute from the teleport, plug it into the clear location type and then clear location type into the teleport. Next, let's go back to our behavior tree. In our behavior tree, what we need to do is we need to pop open our fatigue, hunger, 
or in this case, our reduced fear, as we've named it. And we need to go down to the very bottom on the abort. So we aren't going to restart our, you know, gain or lose fear timers based on if they leave a building. All we're going to do is set them back to idle. And this will actually open up a potential way for us to see that we can abort if they are both fatigued, hungry, and afraid. So just move that up there. All right, finally, what we need to do is go back to our behavior tree. And now that we have an event, if this is aborted, it will loop back through. However, we need to tell this to abort. Now, what we could do is we could take this check right here, this abort self, copy and paste it into here, and you'll notice we have an issue. We no longer have the observer aborts, so it won't actually abort. So instead of having it this way, also, let's go back here for a second into our enter building, and it looks like there's a small problem. Our location type needs to be exposed. So let's make that something we can edit, and let's go back to here, and set our location type to location type. Let's do the same for our move to residence. And let's do the same for that move to residence as well. All right, so as I was saying, the observer abort won't work here. So we have to change our setup a tiny bit. So to get this to work, what we need to do is we're gonna leave this found building. We're actually just going to cut this for a second and paste it down here. We are gonna do a sequence. So my original idea of doing a sequence was actually correct. I couldn't remember why I decided against it. We're gonna plug that into there. We're gonna plug this one into there. And we still want this decorator, so we're gonna grab the decorator and put it onto our sequence. Now, as for our abort here on this is at residence, we're gonna do is at building, or is in a building. We're going to change this to abort on self. We are going to change our location check to outside. If they are outside, we want this to abort. So we need to do one more thing. We need to set this to an inverse condition. So if it is false that they're outside, in other words, they're inside somewhere, either a residence or a non-residence, then this will run. If they are actually outside and this is true, this will abort and will loop back through which means that when we remove a unit from a building while it's afraid, it will come back through here. It'll go, hmm, am I near a building? Yes, go into the building and let's start reducing our fear again. Let's test this out. So we have a unit moving towards the building. They're all moving to the same building. We're gonna use one of the training posts. We're gonna release Kelly. Kelly then moves around, goes back. Let's release her again. She moves around and goes back. So that works for our fear. Now let's make sure that our new setup for our hunger timers works correctly. Just again, gonna move that unit master to the end. I'm gonna open up my stats and I'm gonna set my fear to zero and my fatigue level to 0.9. So this will work for both fatigue and hunger. If it works for one, it should work for the other, but I do strongly recommend testing both. All right, hit play. And they all are now moving to the correct building. They've all arrived. Let's release the two units. She should run back, there we go. They've arrived at the building. So now we have that working for our units when they are fatigued or hungry. I'm gonna set this to 0.8, so I'm above our critical value, and I'm gonna set my fear to one. What I recommend you do is that you unpin your behavior tree move it to the side or move it to an alternate window and watch what happens when you release a unit from a building. That way you can see if the abort both on the is afraid works. Now what might happen as an FYI is that it will run the is afraid first. When you release a unit, it might jump to the needs sleep if you've done fatigue or the needs hunger if you've done the hunger one um, or needs food that is. And then it will jump back to the is afraid within a couple of seconds, or within a second usually. This might cause a unit to run to the barracks regardless because what will happen is a unit will get the information that, you know, they're 
fatigued or hungry and start moving to the barracks. And then because they're moving to the barracks, that becomes the nearest building to them. So let's hit play. And they're all moving as is afraid right now. I'm going to grab again our unit that's inside of our training post and release them. All right, it didn't jump over for me, which is good. That means it is seeing the correct thing. Again, they're going back to the correct building. So our abort both, or abort on self and lower priority is working. That takes us through clearing up our behavior trees for our units. All of that said, I know this is a relatively short tutorial, but hopefully the logic and what we're doing is a bit more clear now and makes sense as to how to address these issues. All of that said, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you want to make sure that you know when the next tutorial is out, hit that subscribe and notify icon. And also, if you want to help support this channel further, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. As always, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.